This is Detroit Sports World. My name is Maurice Lewis. I got to get something off my chest. And I hope that many people are listening and can agree with me, but I got a lot to say. And it's about what Stan Van Gundy just said today. In a report or in an interview, Stan Van Gundy said that trading Marcus Moores was the most difficult decision he made in the three years with the Pistons. The most difficult decision. You think? I agree with that. Because he, sh he probably should have never been traded because he was the foundation that of the Stan Van Gundy era in Detroit. I mean, let's just go back. Let's go back real quick, all right? The first move Stan Van Gundy made was, does everybody remember, anybody remember this? Trading Curran Butler for Ersan Ilyasova. I don't really uh, see that as a foundation starter. I mean, this guy, Ersan Ilyasova was more so of a role player and he could shoot stretch four type player, okay? And then later on, before the season started, the start of the Stan Van Gundy era, he trades a second round pick to the Phoenix Suns to get Danny Granger, Marcus Morris, and Reggie Bullock. That was the start of the Stan Van Gundy era. Was that trade because Marcus Morris wasn't getting no type of love in Phoenix. Nothing at all. He got his spot took. He took less money to play with his brother. Let me talk about that for a second. Let me talk about that for a second. All right. The reason why Marcus Morris and Markeith Morris stayed in Phoenix is because they wanted to play together. Markeith Morris, who had a career year averaging like 15, 16 points at power four, at the power point position, he was supposed to get paid, and he took a five-year deal worth $32 million. Markeith Morris did that when he should have got paid way more than that. Then here comes his brother. His brother takes a five, Mark, Marcus Morris takes a five-year deal worth $20 million to stay in Phoenix and play with his brother. And that was a disaster. They didn't get along with the coach. It was just a whole bunch of stuff going on. And they trusted that organization. They were loyal. The, or the organization wasn't loyal to them. And that's I hate that because how... Players can't be loyal to the organization because then it, it, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. But at the same time, organizations aren't loyal to the players. So how can the players be loyal to the organization? So you, Sam Van Gunny gets a guy who wasn't being treated right in Phoenix, has a chip on his shoulder, got his spot took, should have been starting, should have been starting, and... Cause, and he got into it with Jeff Hornacek, but should have been starting. And Stan Van Gundy sees that. And he goes, man, we got a talented player over here who isn't being used properly. I'll take you. A second round pick? Marcus Morris, really a second round pick? Okay. He was only averaging at the time like seven, maybe eight points a game. Wasn't really getting that many minutes. Comes to the Pistons and has career years, a career year for him, averaging like 14 points a game, 14 points a game. He was the foundation, the start of the foundation for the Detroit Pistons in the Stan Van Gundy era. And I say this because Drummond wasn't um, picked up by or wasn't drafted by Stan Van Gundy. Dumars was. Later on came Reggie in the trade when Stan Van Gundy was there. But after that, and even in Caldwell Pope, even Caldwell Pope, and, and on the whole thing with Josh Smith, it was a whole disaster, a whole disaster. I truly believe 
that Marcus Morris was the start of the Stan Van Gundy era. Now, check this out. You name a leader, one leader on that team of the Detroit Pistons. Do you really think Drummond was a leader at the time? Do you really think Reggie Jackson was the leader at the time? Do you think any Caldwell Pope, as vocal as he is, do you think that he was the leader at the time? No, it was Marcus Morris. He was the role model for the rookies. He was the leader of that team. He was the most vocal. He controlled the locker room. And a lot of guys looked up to him. So was this the most difficult decision? Absolutely. It didn't have to be made, but for whatever plan that Stan Van Gundy and Bauer has, they had to do it. Now, if I'm in that organization, will I have done that? Could it could it could it have there been other alternatives to acquire Avery Bradley? I think so. Absolutely. I really do. Because we have assets. We have assets. However, it's kind of difficult because those assets are a little bit overpaid, but we have assets. So, yeah, we didn't take on the contract of Caldwell Pope, and we offered him $80 million and he rejected it. So, we renounced his contract, making him an unrestricted free agent, and then we make the trade in getting Avery Bradley, who's on a $30, $32 million contract, which is cheaper than what Caldwell Pope is asking for. I get that. But let me just say this to all the Pistons fans out there. We would not be in this situation with the salary cap issue, with paying Reggie Jackson $90 million, Andre Drummond $130 million. Not saying that they're not worth their contracts. I'm not saying that. But John Lord, $40 million. Boban, $30 million-ish, $30 million. We're going to pay all these other players top money when they don't even deserve the top money to lure them to Detroit. And now we're a top five team with the salary cap and we can't make any moves. Well, of course we can't sign Caldwell Pope. Of course we can't keep, of course we can't keep Marcus Morris and trade him off or renounce his contract in order to make a trade to nor in order to get a guy with a smaller contract. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. My name is Maurice Lewis. You can follow me on all social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. I hope I made sense into what I'm what I'm saying. I'm a very passionate person when it comes to sports. I hope you guys know that. And um, hopefully whatever I said helped in this situation, especially with the Pistons. Y'all have a good one.